friends this is Ashirwad here in this video we'll be continuing our uh, previous uh, topic that is tokens in the previous uh, uh, lecture we covered up uh, the terms like uh, identifier uh, tokens variables constant and few concepts a uh, few things about data types okay in this lecture we are going to discuss data types in detail okay so let me just uh, recall the basic concept of uh, data type data type specifies what type of value can be stored in an identifier okay so very simple definition data type specifies what type of value can be stored in an identifier okay so for example one of the data types is int that's what i mentioned in the previous lecture and suppose the name of the identifier is n so what i can store here is an integer that is specified by this data type so just like int we have other data types and we'll discuss them one by one one very important thing you have to understand uh, right now that whenever you attach a data type with uh, an identifier or simply variable or constant that memory location occupies some bytes okay for example if in this case n is my memory location so what is going to be the size of this memory location n okay the answer is 4 bytes okay this is fixed so the java language uh, whenever uh, you uh, declare integer variables they always occupy 4 bytes okay for each integer variable so just remember the con concept so how many bytes are going to be occupied by the memory location will depend on its data type so that is what you have to keep in mind so let us begin and let us discuss the basic data types in java one by one the first data type is byte okay java is a case sensitive language guys so remember uh, the keywords must be written in small letters like int byte and on all the data types uh, names they all must be written in small letters so just just uh, be aware of that so moving on with byte the identifier of this type stores integers within the range minus 128 to 127 okay so we have another data type uh, along with int that is byte in which you can store integer numbers but you cannot store anything beyond this range that is the limit of this data type okay and of course the identifier occupies one byte of memory so for example if i declare a memory location or simply variable with the name b and its data type is byte so the number of bytes b is going to occupy is one byte okay so you can store the value 10 here it is correct but if you are trying to store any other larger integer number like i am trying to store 2000 here it is incorrect because 2000 is going beyond the range of byte so this is what you have to understand okay the next data type is short again you have to write it in small letters only so what does short do it also stores integers but its range as you can see is higher than the range of byte which was 
this okay and here you can store a larger number but again if anything goes beyond this range it will not be stored in short type of identifier or variable so for example if i have to declare a short type of variable so i'll simply write short s let it be let the name be s and i can store 20000 so it is perfectly fine but if i want to store suppose uh, 2 lakh it will not be stored okay the next data type is of course int which we have already discussed but let us discuss its range we know that the identifier of this type occupies four bytes in memory okay so for example if i write int i is equal to 100 so i is going to occupy four bytes of memory and uh, of course the range is much higher than the range of short okay in fact uh, you can store uh, 10 digit number uh, you, you cannot have comma here okay so just let me de delete that you cannot store numbers with comma sign okay so this is the range you have to remember so as you can see 10 digit number is possible but not every 10 digit number you can store in it okay so you have to uh, keep your eye on uh, what number you are going to store okay so this is int the next is long it is long hence the range is higher than int again you can store integer value only in it but the range is way higher than int okay and if you can count them you can store 19 digit number in a long type of variable so okay this is the long data type okay and it occupies 8 bytes of memory so if you have a very large number to store uh, integer type of number of course you can uh, take long or int and if you want to store some smaller values you can uh, take short and byte one important thing uh, the programmers or the learners need to understand here is what is the selected data type okay like if i want to store a very small value uh, for example 100 i and i take int as its data type this is not good programming practice okay uh, why because 100 is a smaller value so I can take a byte data type for, for storing this value. You know, as you can see, you can you have this range for bytes, so 100 can easily be stored by byte. But if you take int or any other data type like long or short, then you will be able to store 100, but it is a wastage of memory since i will anyhow occupy four bytes of memory no matter what you store in it okay so it is recommended that whatever uh, whenever you you choose a data types for your programs choose a data type which occupies less memory so that way you can make your program more efficient okay so moving on now we have float data type and double data type written in small letters of course to store numbers with decimal part so for example if i have to store a value 15.56 then i must use float data type or double data type okay You can also use double to 
store this value but the point is again uh, that double occupies 8 bytes of memory the the identifier of double type occupies 8 bytes of memory and the identifier of float type occupies 4 bytes of memory okay and of course there is a range uh, for these uh, two data types uh, but that range uh, you can check out yourself as it is uh, you know uh, since we, we generally normally do not store very large uh, floating point number so the range is not uh, that much of a concern here okay now one point I want to clear right now that if you declare a float type of variable for example n and you want to store 15.56 for example okay this line in java will not work okay because the java language assumes all the floating point values as double remember that okay it is just a language setting okay so if you want this value to be treated as float type of value you must attach small f after this okay it is just a little thing that you need to remember uh, uh, as far as float and double uh, are concerned okay we'll discuss more in detail about uh, this thing why this uh, f is required in the upcoming videos okay so for now you just remember that whenever you are declaring float type of memory location or variable and you are storing a value in it you must attach small f with it okay so just remember that then we have char data type small letters again it occupies two bytes of memory and it stores a single character in it okay that single character can be an alphabet it can be a number or it can also be a symbol okay so for example i have taken ch as the name of my memory location or simply the name of my variable and i am storing the character a in it okay uh, remember whenever you are storing values in a char type of variable you must enclose these values inside single quotes because if you do not put single quotes around this a here will be treated as a variable name okay not as a value so i hope the point is clear to you in this case it simply means that assign the value of a to ch okay this is what we don't want we want a to be treated as a value and then this value should be assigned to ch so we must treat a as a value so we must enclose it in single quotes same goes for this although 9 is a number by nature but you can store it in c okay and similarly you can store any other uh, symbol if you want like char c is equal to or c2 let me take is equal to single quotes percentage or dollar so these uh, uh, single characters any single characters from uh, keyboard can be stored in a char type of variable but it occupies two bytes of memory and it must be written inside single quotes okay the next data type is boolean now this is a very interesting data type because uh, what it uh, stores is either true or false okay now remember true and false both are keywords okay so don't uh, treat them as uh, strings or characters these are uh, fixed values okay 
where true represents 1 and false represents 0 okay so how do we use boolean data type uh, as you can see in the example I have declared a variable of type boolean b and here I am storing true in it okay so the value b the value of variable b is right now true after this line so this is boolean okay and the last data type in the list is string type with s written in capital letters remember now string is not actually a predefined data type in java okay hence i have not written string data type okay it works as a data type all right but technically speaking string is actually a class okay uh, right now you people cannot understand the concept of class okay since we have not covered it yet uh, but uh, you just uh, understand that string is not a predefined type and uh, since it's a class uh, it doesn't have any fixed amount of um, uh, how much uh, memory it is going to occupy like int occupies 4 bytes uh, float occupies 4 bytes and all so this type of fixed memory size is not associated with string okay why because it's a class so the concept of class and all will be covering up later so here in the example you can see i have declared a variable s and i have stored my name in it the point to consider is i have enclosed the string uh, the value inside double quotation marks now this is a compulsory thing whenever you are uh, going to store a value of type string in a string type of variable you must enclose that value inside double quotes and what if we don't do it let me remove them so what does this statement mean now it means again that this whole thing is going to be treated as a variable and the meaning of the statement goes like this assign the value of this variable or copy the value of this variable in s and this is what we don't want we want this whole bunch of characters to be treated as a value as a string value so this is the rule here that you enclose all string values inside double quotation marks okay so that's it for uh, data types i hope you have understood uh, the concepts of all these uh, predefined basic data types in java okay there is more to speak about data types but we have not uh, gone uh, to the details of uh, data types in this lecture because it will simply confuse you okay so we'll cover up uh, the uh, related topics uh, on the data types as we go along in my upcoming videos so thank you so much for watching do like and subscribe if you like the content thank you